I really have to change the music on this. Mm, maybe we wait for like the next season. Yeah, maybe after Easter we'll change the music. Yeah. Uh, well, hi everybody. My name's Keith. This is the In Context Podcast. Um, we are sitting in my office in sunny Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> The I'm smell wait. of a very masculine candle. It does. The room. Does it smell masculine in here? It's, it's a first thing colonish. you remarked, but yeah. you thought it was my wife's. Oh, doing. I thought your wife got tired of your office smelling like a gym locker, and so she like made you do some things. Yeah, but, I outed you know, myself on you did. Sunday. You kind of outed yourself. I did. I and yeah. So now <laughs> I think there's a lot more people who are free to say, uh, "Man, you stink." <laughs> yes. Take a shower. Change your. You clothes. need to start keeping tally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, that other voice you hear is Brandon Levering. He's also a pastor here at Stonebridge. And uh, we're back in the mode of the the one-on-one. That's right. And, Gospel uh, of John. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you know, it was nice to have that that season where we had Josh and It was. And and we'll, we'll pull them in, I'm sure. Pull them back periodically. in. Periodically. Yeah. yeah, we are in, we're back in the Gospel of John. Um, and uh, last time, our last podcast, we talked a lot about uh, the sovereignty of God mm-hmm. in salvation, and um, but this this last week was a lot of. I mean, it's kind of the other side of the coin. It it wasn't simply the sovereignty of God, but it was also the responsibility of right judgment by people. Yes, right? yeah. So kind of even the end of end of John six, where you see the reaction of Jesus's disciples, and and there you you see both, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they're wrestling genuinely, but Jesus reminds them, this is why I told you nobody can come unless my father draws him. Right. But you get into chapter 7, 1 to 24, which is what we looked at this last weekend, and and you've got these different vignettes of all of these different people drawing conclusions about Jesus. They are uh, wrestling with uh, who he is, uh, his brothers, the right. crowds, the Jewish leaders, Right. but... Uh, they're all drawing their conclusions, as as Jesus puts it in uh, in verse twenty four, on human appearances rather than right judgment. Right. And so, um, and, and so it's this wonderful picture of what you know what happens when we look at Jesus merely through our own human vantage point, our mm-hmm. assumptions, our our presuppositions, our um, our our perspective. Um, but then it's also the other side of it is everybody has to draw those conclusions at some point. Right. So it's not that it's the the effort of wrestling with who is Jesus, which, uh, you know, uh, Josh is going to be preaching the rest of chapter 7 right. this Sunday. Right. And you're going to get barraged by a whole bunch of opinions. Like they're sure. starting to kind of land and nobody's landing in the same place right. and so on and so forth. But as chaotic as the chapter is, it's work that everybody must do at some point. We right. have to draw conclusions. Right. Now, we know from chapter 6, we won't draw the correct conclusion unless the Lord draws us and right. opens our eyes. Right. But that doesn't relieve us from the responsibility of wrestling honestly, yeah. asking hard questions, yeah. and doing the work. Yeah. Who in the world is this Jesus? Who do I believe him to be? Yeah, I think that's where a lot of people will get where a lot of people get hung up and uh, fall into fatalism mm, mm-hmm. almost because, yeah. well, what does it even matter if... Yeah, if the Lord has you know, to draw me, why do I even, why, why evangelize? Right. Da, da, da. Why do anything? Yeah. Why even care about this? You know, if I guess I'm, if I'm doomed, I'm doomed. <laughs> but, you know, there there is this weird, that, that went weird interplay that we just briefly talked about in the last podcast of uh, that balance between God, you know, Jesus can say, hey, this is a work of God, but then He also says, "Make the right judgment." Exactly. Right. So exactly. there, there's both. It's like it's a statement of, "Hey, you don't have any hope without God, but you're still responsible for making the right decision." Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's that both and that puts that tension there. Yeah. You know. Yep. Um, but then the question does become: So then, what does that look like um, to make to make right judgment? And and starting off, starting off with the 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 overall reality that mm-hmm. John presents to us is really nobody but Jesus makes the right judgment in John like the, mm-hmm. like you said one of the things that you said this week in the sermon was you should be suspicious of any podcaster or or preacher who makes himself the hero of the story yeah right yeah, yeah. Um, but 
that's, you know, John presents to us very clearly that Jesus is the hero of the story yes. and everybody else falls yes. far short, including, you know, including John the Baptist, who's like, you yeah. re- are you really <laughs> who you say you are? Yeah. You know, who even balks a little bit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when he's, when he's in jail. So, um, Jesus is the only one, but it does show us that nobody really, nobody really comes to Jesus without these preconceived notions mm-hmm. that come from uh, some sense of self, what I want to be true, right? Yeah. So just some of those, so the Jews want it to be true that he's going to be this military leader, that he's going to feed them yeah. and do tricks for yep. them yep. and make everything great. Uh, Peter, it's kind of along the same lines. Peter has his own desires and we'll find that out yeah. As, yeah. as time goes on. So everybody comes to Jesus with with some sort of uh, pre-existing Absolutely. idea of who he should be. Absolutely. Right? And Jesus even leans into that uh, in John's gospel in particular, well, in different ways in each gospel, but John is frequently presenting him as the fulfillment of the various institutions, mm-hmm. festivals, expectations of, of first century Judaism. Right. And so he's playing on some of those anticipations and right. expectations. There's... Not that everybody's connecting the dots, right? Right. right. But he's showing them like this was always the plan, right. and and God, in His mercy, organized history up to this point to supply you with the categories you'll need f- to recognize me when I arrive, right? Which is absolutely amazing, right? Um, and so he he leans into that, and and I think he he's patient with some, he's pointed toward others, um, but. The conclu- and you think about why he why John has even written this book that you might believe you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's recorded these signs that you, you might, might believe, believe right. that Jesus is the Christ and have life in his name and so you know that that process of um, recognizing we're never going to judge perfectly and 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 that there are obstacles to making right judgments right. in in every human being um, and yet we are called to draw a conclusion about Jesus. Right. Yeah. Right. So let's let's maybe uh we've probably you know, roughly three things that we could uh, talk about and this would be if for if you're a believer and maybe you struggle with your assessment mm-hmm. of Jesus, mm-hmm. these will be helpful things to revisit. Uh if you're listening and you you are not you're new to the faith, you're new to you're just discovering who Jesus is, I think these will be helpful as you try to get a clear um, view of the standard of judgment that, yeah. that Jesus is calling us to apply. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I just thought it would be fun, you know, because because this is uh, the way I like to do things, is to, to put a Calvin quote. <laughs> <laughs> In case I haven't showed my cards <laughs> yet. Um, but uh, Calvin said this. He said, judgment will never be right unless it is formed from the truth of reality. For as soon as personality comes into it, eyes and senses are focused on that, and the truth immediately disappears. Mm. So, which, which is really profound. But if you stop and think about it, the the Enlightenment kind of gave us the idea that we can come to something completely like yeah. tabula rasa, like mm-hmm. we are a blank slate. We have the information in front of us, and we have the capacity to make a right judgment. Whereas Calvin would say, which I think is what John is mm-hmm. saying that Jesus said, mm-hmm. is our judgment is already distorted yeah. that when we come to Jesus. We don't come to him yeah. neutrally. Yes. We come to him with already our, our senses on. and mm-hmm. our sin is influencing how we're looking at yeah. things, the preconceived yeah. notions. Which, the irony, this is a small, tiny rabbit trail, and I promise I won't I go I love rabbit deep. trails. Uh, the irony is, is that's... Uh, that was one of the gifts of postmodernism. Right. To to look at modernism and say, no, you're not really the blank slate that you are. Right. Now, of right. course, postmodernism too goes too far right. in saying, and you'll never know. Yeah, you can never know anything. <laughs> right. So it's like, no, we we do come with lenses, we do come with perspectives, right. and exp- you know, and so, but we we can evaluate them. Right. And, and we and should recognize them, and we must. Yeah. In order to see clearly what you know, I often use the. Um, illustration of uh i i wear contacts uh negative 3.75 Dude, baby so negative uh, seven. Oh, i feel so much better about <laughs> myself right now <laughs> so you know you you know the ritual then you go to the eye yeah. doctor and yeah. you sit in front of the thing they make you take your contacts out better one if your prescriptions like us then yeah, yeah. they probably don't even they skip that part to, sh- to spare us the shame right 
But when they get that massive machine in front with a four thousand lenses on it, yeah, right. Which one better looks one clear? Or two. You know, better one, one or two? Or three or four? Dude, that is a fear-inducing. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I don't. Can you go back to three? Yeah, and no, I feel like he's getting if, frustrated. What if it was like, I don't know. If I'm wrong, <laughs> I can't see anything. Us, us who have test taking anxiety hate yeah. that. But what's interesting is like when the when the lens is fuzzy. What they don't do is walk over to the wall and change oh, the letters. Right. They change the lens. Right. So that you can see reality with clarity. Right. And and so what postmodernism modernism would say we don't need lenses. Right. We all have perfect vision. <laughs> right, postmodernism right. would say we're so trapped behind our lenses we'll never actually know what's on the wall. Right. But reality is no, we wear lenses. There is something on the wall and the lenses should help us see it clearly, yeah. not distort it. Yeah. And so we have to be honest about what lenses we're wearing and what and those lenses can be our personal experiences. They can be our tr- our church traditions. They can be things that have happened to us, things that we've done. Right. Politics. You know, there's a thousand different frameworks that we might uh, adopt willingly or unwittingly. Yeah. But we we have to be honest about all of them because the Jesus is there. Are we seeing him clearly? Yeah. Or not? Right. And and so how do how do we? What are some ways we might? go about doing that well first of all that was a great illustration because now I, all i can think about is like next time i'm just gonna be like can you just change the letters on the wall <laughs> i'm just gonna spit something off and you just be like yeah good to go how dangerous would that be oh if they goodness. gave me like negative three <laughs> and i'll tell you I, when i take my contacts out my my family thinks i'm lying like from me to you i can't make out your facial features if i don't have lenses on That's like a, none of yeah. them it's just a color blob right <laughs> it's blind blind yeah um <laughs> so the the goal for so the goal for us if you're if you're trying to approach Jesus um in a way that you can really understand who he is um then you you have to be rooted in the truth mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so you have to be re- rooted in objective truth so the first thing is like we just talked about you in even using the eye doctor you first recognize that you need help seeing yes and if you can't do that that's where you know a lot of people get hung up mm. if you can't first admit that your sight is not perfect mm. there's there's no proceeding after that point yeah. and you may like if you're listening if you're listening and you're not a believer and you're just absolutely convinced that you know this one thing about Jesus is is true or is false if you're already convinced it's going to be very hard to mm-hmm. to persuade you of anything. Totally. Right? Yeah. And, and the if, same if there's thing. There's no genuine openness right. to the exploration. Right. If there, if you can't come to it saying maybe I am wrong in, at the outset, mm-hmm. if you can't come with with a fresh understanding that you need help really even, seeing even Jesus. just a I'm willing to be convinced that I'm wrong, even right. if you don't think you are. Right. You know, are you going to engage honestly, or are you only looking for the exit? hatch yes you know in the conversation i'm looking for the loophole to let me out of this right and at this point in time in history the historicity of jesus cannot be called into question anymore i mean there's there's too much so as long as you can come um the goal is for you to be rooted in the truth Mm -hmm. right if you can see the objective truth then you can start to to understand this and then ultimately would be to then express that truth by faith in your own life that's the goal we're not just asking like one of the things is sometimes we feel like if we can just convince people that Jesus is real, then like we've won a battle. But mm-hmm. you haven't really won a battle. Lots of people believe in Jesus. They just don't, just doesn't change them. Exactly. Right. So, um, so I, I would say the first thing would be like a healthy self evaluation. Okay. Right. So as we talk about, like even again, the eye doctor, it's just a great illustration. Great job, man. But um, <laughs> just a healthy self evaluation, uh, like looking into the ways in which you know that you're, um, your understanding or interpretation of Jesus might already be flawed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So for, that would be for me. I, I think it's sin. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Like if you can, if you can ad- admit, it's it's really is kind of like the old the old school Baptist. If you're if you're trying to walk through somebody through the gospel, you start with you do the ABCs. Right. Uh, admit you're a sinner. Right. <laughs> but but that's not. I'm not trying to make light of that. There really is no understanding, Jesus, if you can't get to the point where you will admit that you are morally flawed. Yeah. Yeah, conviction of sin is the the necessary starting point for any true 
quote unquote discovery of Jesus. Right. Like if I don't see a need for him personally, um, and and so the other side of that is sin then also becomes one of the greatest obstacles to seeing him clearly. Mm-hmm. It's one of the the fuzziest lenses that in our repertoire. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think of Ephesians four. You know, as Paul describes the uh, the life and and practices of of the Gentiles, mm. like the you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They're darkened in their understanding, uh, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, they become callous and, and and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. You know, so there is this lens of sin that we all carry and it's going to cloud our view of Jesus it's going to me where I see it come up and and you know to Paul's point here he's not just talking about non-believers he's talking about believers no longer acting like non-believers yeah it's the same prescription for both (laughs) yeah right and so that sin can still cloud our vision as a believer in Christ and and so um recognizing my own propensity to, I want to see and view and use Jesus for my own purposes. Like, that's the default starting point for fallen yeah, humanity. Right. Um, and if I don't see any need for him, I ignore him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that honest assessment of my own flaws, my own proclivities um, that stand to get in the way of a clear assessment of Christ. Right. Um, that, that's an absolutely necessary starting point. Well, it's why it doesn't help. Um, I'm going to hurt people's feelings. It doesn't help to start, like, we, I think sometimes as Christians, we're well-meaning when we're trying to share the gospel. Mm-hmm. So we'll lead off with, like, Jesus loves you, right? Jesus doesn't show up to the crowds and be like, guys, I love you. Like, <laughs> I have a wonderful thing for you. I have a wonderful plan for you. <laughs> like, Jesus doesn't. Uh, he, Jesus doesn't say like, "Hey, anybody, anybody want to be in on this? Uh, like, I'll make life so much better. Like, just raise that hand, like, and repeat after me. And then if you come on, come on with me. Like, Jesus is constantly in these passages. It's almost like he's trying to like, he's and is not sinfully antagonizing people, but he's making that line. He's mm-hmm. he's making them look at themselves yeah. in order to see him rightly. And and that's the, one of the things that gets in the way is this healthy self-evaluation is I've talked to so many people who have this barrier to faith. They're, they'd be like, well, I'm just not ready. And the number one problem I see is they can't believe that there's not something wrong with God, right? Mm. Like they give themselves all the excuses in the world, mm. but then the problem for them is like, well, he's not fair, or he didn't do this mm. for me, or mm-hmm. he didn't, you know, when this was happening to me, he didn't show up. And it's sure. like, hold on. Yeah. And and this is the same thing that you were talking about. Like, how do you evaluate Jesus? Don't evaluate him by God's, like by his timing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but by your timing, yeah, but by but his by timing, his. right? Yeah. Yeah. So all these evaluations that we tend to make of God when somebody's searching for faith, in many cases, we don't help people who are genuinely searching mm-hmm. because we're we're helping them lean into themselves as the center of all yeah. things and then putting Jesus under the microscope yeah. rather than putting themselves under the microscope and seeing God in light of that. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I mean, it's the old adage that uh, you have to realize that you're lost before you can be found. Right. Right. And, right. and, um, and you know, I think that lostness can, uh, or those barriers can show it in all sorts of ways. You, you get some who are sitting there judging God for not showing up on their timetable you get others who are like no i know there's a god and i've blown it so badly yeah that yep. there's no way he'd ever want anything to do with me yeah both of those are lies right right and, and, and right. yet both of them like uh we, we have to recognize that there's a lot you know repenting of my righteousness and repenting of my sin <laughs> both <laughs> right right, right. right. Uh, so that i'm at a place where there's a there's a I have an honest need. This world is honestly broken. Right. All right. Now, who does Jesus say he is? Right. On, on his terms, right. not my terms. And, right. Yeah. There's there's a need for um, there's a need for repentance, but there's also a need for forgiveness. Is mm-hmm. what you yes. what you yeah. described mm-hmm. that you don't just recognize I'm sinful, but you recognize that Jesus is really the only one who's got the solution to that problem. Yeah. So what do you do if you're sinful? You just say, "Well, I'm not good enough for God." No, you dig into God's word. You use God's word the standard. Yeah. You use Christ's own words as the standard. 
um, when he offers life, right? That if you deny yourself, mm-hmm. take up your cross mm-hmm. and follow me, then, then there is life, there is forgiveness, there is hope and healing. And both of those things, and I think where a lot of Christians get stuck is they have, they have no problem with the repentance and mm-hmm. confession. They have a huge problem with actually receiving the forgiveness of Christ. And yeah. so they get in their own way thinking that their sin is too much for Christ yeah. to overcome. Yeah. Uh, or or he he made the down payment and now I got to start making repayments. Right, uh, I got to pay him back for what he's done. Yeah, the, um, which is, but this is but this is the way that our self evaluation gets in the way. You mentioned mm-hmm. fear of man. Mm. Th- this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this weekend, yeah, in the that sermon. was part of the crowd's problem. Man, and that's a thing that really for for me personally, that's a thing that really hung on me. So like the last three days, I've been like reading things on fear of man and going back and reading. Um, you know, why is that such a problem for people? And what it really comes down to, I mean, is you're not taking God at his word. Mm. Like you are, you are putting, you are actually, <laughs> like you said, you can do one of two things in, in trying to, you know, to see Jesus rightly. You can, you can fall on one or two traps in self-evaluation. Either you never acknowledge your sin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's always somebody else's fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you never acknowledge that there's forgiveness in Christ. Yeah. yeah. And those two are, are equally damaging. Yeah. For, for some Christians, they just restart every day. It's mm-hmm. like they can't, doesn't mm-hmm. feel like you're getting anywhere. Yeah. Because you cannot bring yourself to see that when Christ, you know, speaks of forgiveness or speaks of salvation or speaks of new life and speaks of abiding, you just can't put yourself there because you cannot get over the fact that you just can't accept that God can actually forgive you, yeah. right? Yeah, it's those gospel guardrails, man. Yeah. Sinfulness of I sin, know. sufficiency of grace. Yeah, it is. And it, Keith and wants to put it on a T-shirt. I do. I, I really <laughs> do. I, I want to put it on a piece of paper on my computer so every day I can look at that and say, you know, these these are the guardrails. But, I mean, the, that that portion of it, the self-evaluation, is where most people tend to get yeah. stuck. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Um, but it's only through that self-evaluation that I think you can really, if you can get yourself, if you, I don't want to say get yourself, <laughs> all the sovereignists there are like, you can't say that. All right, calm down. <laughs> if you can get to the point where you can acknowledge that I'm sinful and I'm in need of of grace, I'm in need of forgiveness, mm-hmm. then then you really can start to see these things that John is presenting through a different yeah. lens, right? Yeah. Your lens is great. It's like better one or two. Oh, yeah. two. Two. Exactly. And, the, and, so the, and so the increasing thing would kind of, I think the next thing would be in, increasingly focusing on Jesus more than you're focusing on yourself. Mm. So a self-evaluation is necessary. But if you spend all of your time in self-evaluation. Yeah. That's when you're that's when you fall it's into like, those traps. It's like fiddling with making sure you get the first button right on your button up. Right. Because if you get it in the <laughs> wrong one, the whole rest of the shirt's out of line. It's so frustrating. <laughs> but if you never move on from the first button, right. your shirt's just flapping open. <laughs> right. <laughs> the oh, analogy yeah. breaks down. But you know I just, you need you need to button the rest of it. Right. And that's gonna happen by focusing on Jesus, not me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, you know, the same thing. If you're if, <laughs> If you are looking down, if you're at the eye doctor and you're looking down or you're thinking of other things or you're closing your eyes, right? Or you're just thinking about like, oh, how do I answer this question right? Like you're (laughs) never, you're never really going to see it, right? You're not, you're not focusing on the right thing. Yeah. Um, It's like when they do that. The whole point is to focus on the poster. Yeah. Other, the most stressful test is when he's like, follow the thing with your eye or like look straight ahead and they're shining that bright light in your eyes. You're like, I can't. Yeah. How am I supposed to do this? Um. But focusing on on Jesus more than self, and again with the diagnostics that you presented this weekend mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. in this passage, um, l- and let's just talk about those. So you, you the first thing yeah, you said so, was yeah. So so kind of in, in some ways each story presents a different way that people appealed to human appearances right. instead of God. So right. so his brothers you know focused on their own timetable mm-hmm. of when they thought Jesus should do his thing versus right. God's timetable. The crowds were kind of focusing on God's on on the standards of man, the fear of man. That for fear of the Jews, they wouldn't actually talk openly versus God's standards. They were yeah. more worried about what the Jewish leaders would say than what God has said. Yeah. Um, and then when Jesus gets into his conversation with the crowds and the Jewish leaders in the temple itself, uh, he focuses first on the will of God versus the will of man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where does this teaching come from? Well, if you are honestly desiring God's will, then you're going to be able to tell whether my teaching is from heaven or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so that whose kingdom, whose allegiance, whose, uh, whose desire am I pursuing, mine or God's? Yeah. 
Um, and then the last one was God's law, or you know, generalizing it out to Scripture. But part of the accuser's accusation uh, was that Jesus was breaking the law when he healed the man on the Sabbath mm-hmm. back in chapter 5. And mm-hmm. Jesus is saying, uh, you're trying to use the law against me, but you're actually not keeping it. Right. And you know, you're eager to break it in judging me. And you guys make exceptions on the Sabbath for all sorts of things, right. and my exception's actually better than yours. And so, you know, they're using, they're working against Scripture to evaluate Jesus right. rather than evaluating him in accordance with Scripture. Right. And so, so kind of timetable, standards, will, and law or yeah. Scripture were the yeah. four uh, categories there. The brothers is the funniest one because they're like, hey, man, why don't you just go show off your superpowers? Yeah. (laughs) And he's like, nope, not going to do it. And then he does it. (laughs) Just like an older brother. (laughs) Just like an older brother. (laughs) Hey, man, why don't you go? Why don't you go get your car going? No, I don't want to. And then he goes and gets his car going. You Mm -hmm. know, it's just, man, it's I I resonate as a middle child. I resonate with that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but. Yeah, it's the it's this concept of what you repeatedly were were hammering home this past weekend was stop making basically stop making your evaluations on your own perspective. Yeah. Yep. Make your evaluations on who Jesus says he is, what yep. he says he's going to do, how he operates. Put yourself secondary. I saw a, a uh, I saw this pop up actually in a couple commentaries. Um, it's basically the same sentiment in one devotional book in the last couple weeks as I been studying through Mm -hmm. John, is only Christ himself can live the Christian life, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so what what gets people trapped sometimes is even when we're talking to somebody who might be a skeptic or might be searching Jesus out, it does sometimes naturally come off to someone, oh, now I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm going to know Jesus, then these are are these things that I have to do. And it's not that there's not volition volition or action in the Christian life, there is, but it's always with the understanding that it is no longer I who live, mm-hmm. but Christ who lives in yeah. me. So the Christian life can only really be lived when your focus is on Christ yeah. and not on yourself. Yep. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And it's it it's weird how that works, but that's that that next stage is not just doing a healthy self self evaluation, but then you move from that self evaluation, right? And we would say into a, a relationship of faith mm-hmm. in Christ. Like once you can take him at his word on the basics, right? Yep. Who's Christ, you know, God in the flesh. Is sure. he who he says he is? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if you can yeah. take him, but then you have to move to that place where then his, he becomes your focus. Yeah. Like he is, he is what your, those, those lenses are increasingly, those, those, those five letters down there are actually, yeah, I got to write five. <laughs> <laughs> or Jesus, yeah, J E S U S. I was trying to remember like how many letters are there in Jesus, uh, which seems stupid, but anyway. Uh, but then you're like, you know, it's like you keep squinting. No, 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 one more, one more. Just go to ten. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. up to like lens like better twelve or thirteen, and then I was panicking. I knew my eyes were getting worse when he was like better twelve or thirteen. I was like, what? <laughs> That's um, amazing. But yeah, but it has to it out. It has to come to the place where you understand that like. Um, it's, it's not just the, the initial evaluation that you're making, but it's your constant evaluation. Like who is Christ? Can I trust him to accomplish what he says he's going to do in my life? And when you think about it, that's the way we should approach any individual in terms of getting to know them. Right. right? If, if, if we approached everyday people, uh, a spouse, a friend, a colleague, the way that we approach Jesus, Mm -hmm you know, with a posture of skepticism mm. or just a like, so what can, What have you done for me lately? Or what right. will you do for me? What can I get out of this relationship? Like, right. uh, so often we, or, or, or the whole kind of, I like to think of Jesus as X, Y, or Z. Imagine mm. saying to your your brunette wife, I like to think of my wife as blonde or six foot or, you know, you go and get slapped, right? Like, that's not okay to just... She is who she is, yeah. and and so um, why do we not extend the same courtesy to Jesus yeah. to let Him tell us who He is, right. rather than imposing upon Him all of our desires, preferences, preconceived notions? Oh no, let's let Him talk for a moment. Yeah, and and the way we do that is looking at Scripture, right? Yeah, that's John's entire goal is to reveal mm. to us who Christ is. Yeah, and so if we want 
him to tell us who he is. We need to be quiet and yeah. listen and let him reveal himself on his own terms uh, according to his words, his deeds, his desires, mm-hmm. his his mission for which his father sent him and so on. Uh, one of the, and this is, I don't know how helpful a test this is, but one one test I sometimes think about is, you know, you, you can do, you whether it's Google or whatever you use, you can get, there's a thousand different versions of Jesus today, right? Oh my gosh. You know, you, you, you get, this is a little dated, but you know, you used to have the Jesus is my homeboy t-shirt, you know, you'd have your <laughs> celebrities wearing that or, or, or your Talladega Nights. Praying to Jesus, oh, baby Jesus, in the golden diaper yeah. or whatever. Yeah, you know, know, you get all your different versions of Jesus people might come up with. Right. Spiritual life coach, Jesus. spiritual life coach, yeah. hippie guru Jesus, yeah. um, militant like uh, <laughs> Jesus with a fifty caliber, or whatever. You know, you get them all. Yeah. The question is, would the father look down, looking down, recognize that as his son? Like it's like I I, I know the name, but I don't know who that guy is. Right. right? Right. So Jesus is who he says he is, who his father says he is. Yeah. All right, let's listen. Let's let him tell us who he is right. rather than assuming and so on. Yeah. And that's a hard discipline um, because it really does mean surrendering our lenses and letting Christ reshape them, regrind them, give us a new prescription yeah. to be able to see him clearly. Man, that's that's good. And can we, like, even off of that illustration, can we just pause for a second and say— one really good tool of evaluation for everybody in, like, is to ask yourself the question, when I'm interacting with or thinking of other people, am I primarily thinking of what I'm getting out of it? Mm-hmm. Is my orientation, and be honest, I have to sometimes honestly be like, why am I, you know, what is my goal in meeting with this person? What mm-hmm. is my goal in saying this to this person? Yeah. Am I looking for them to validate me? Yeah. yeah. Right, and as a pastor, yeah, totally. you got to be real careful with that because there are there are times where you almost see like when you're meeting with people, you'll find yourself, if you're not being received by them the way that you want to be received by mm-hmm. them, you'll start feeling, you know, either sad or frustrated. And what a, what a great tool it is to say, how do you know mm-hmm. you're receiving someone based on like just encountering them as they are yeah. versus you trying to decide who they are like you'll find out pretty quick like if they're not responding to you the way that you want you'll get frustrated yep yep um but that, i think that's a really important point because that will keep a lot of people from from digging into jesus and and it's a really good quick way for you to figure out just take inventory of your relationships mm-hmm. are these relationships primarily about me yeah. how, how much yeah. do i serve the people around me or, or take them as you know try to try to hear what they're saying to listen yeah. to them to yeah. evaluate them yeah that's good that is good um, would, but then the, the third thing I think would be um, that we would ask somebody who's either, you know, if you're in Christ and and you're having a problem seeing Jesus for who he is, maybe you're, you're kind of hung up on that. Or if you're somebody who's looking for Jesus um, and you're honestly, honestly searching and, and maybe you can do a self-evaluation and be like, man, maybe I need help. And you can maybe focus on looking more into Jesus, who Jesus is. I think you also need to reinforce those things in community. Mm. Mm, right. Yeah. So definitely. you need to be if who you surround yourself with is going to highly influence how you approach uh, navigating Absolutely. who Jesus is and how Absolutely. you're going to receive that. Because if you with e- even each of those steps, if you have a bunch of friends who are like, hey, you don't need to change. You're great the way you are. Flaws and all like there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Well, you're like, oh, OK, well, maybe I don't really need this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you. We, we kind of have our ourselves, uh, you know, we picture ourselves as the, you know, uh, the lone scientist in the lab discovering right. <clears throat> the cure to cancer all by ourselves or, right. or, or whatever. But even there, like, no exploration is without peer review. No, ex- yeah. you know, no yeah. examination is, with, uh, is done outside of any sort of community. Because, one, we can't always see things in ourselves or, or you know we ju- we need yeah. we need the view and perspective of others to open yeah. our eyes to blind spots to see things we hadn't thought of mm-hmm. um and and so then the question what's the best kind of community for exploring jesus mm-hmm. i mean it makes sense that a community that belongs to jesus and believes in him would be the best community for exploring him even if right. i'm not there yet personally right 
Am I going to spend time seeking him among those who know him or seeking him among those who don't want to or don't or, you mm-hmm. know, it, it, it's like, um, you know, you, a, a, a journalist who is just collecting opinions on a, on a catastrophe mm-hmm. versus interviewing the survivors right. or, the, or the victims yeah. or the eyewitnesses. Yeah, completely different. Like we spend all of our time collecting opinions, but are we talking to those who are in the thick of it? Right. And, and, um, and that's that, you know, the body of believers, because Jesus is not just a scientific experiment. He's not right. just a historical inquiry. He, if he's true, which obviously we believe he is, he's, God and, right. and and so right. the context in which you seek him out is uh, the context of faith is is the that's the community that's going to be best suited to wrestle that out in that journey right yeah yeah if if you're actually going to give it a fair hearing you probably need to surround yourself with the people who have spent the most time yeah. Looking at that person, yeah. really, yeah. like instead of just, but but what tends to happen is sometimes people will be like, well, I need to counterbalance this with mm-hmm. all the skeptical information I can read. It's like, no, that's not, that's not a good way to, to, to research. Like you, yeah. you want to see, uh, you know, the, the tricky thing with that though, is you are going to run into, I think the most disappointing thing for most people, you know, those who are searching and those who are Christians alike, is you realize when you get into a community of those people, you're like, man, these people people are still kind of messed up. <laughs> uh-huh. But but again, like if if the goal of the whole community is to look to Jesus more than they are looking to themselves, yes. then that change will happen over time. Um, and as you're discovering these wonderful things about Jesus, you you do see these fruits of the spirit that are mm-hmm. that are taking place in the community. You know, with yeah. the caveat that there there, you know, there's a lot of times where there are people in Christian community who are not yet really saved, and they're sure. still very selfish and very destructive, and and saved people who aren't fully sanctified. Right, and still, still and we're so still sinful. In, right, exactly, we're still exactly. sinful, and I think that's why it's important. Like like you said, like because as you were talking this week, this wasn't just a message to, to skeptics, mm. mm-hmm. you know, to to non Christian skeptics. This was a message to even some Christian skeptics, mm. and if we're honest. If, if we're honest, I think as Christians, even those who have walked with the Lord, we can still become skeptical of who Jesus says he is. Yeah. We slip into making our own evaluations on him based on worldly factors or sinful judgments rather than coming at him for, for who he actually Absolutely. is. Yeah. But it has to be done. I mean, if you're a Christian and you you are hoping to walk with Christ closer, but you are not subjecting yourself to deep Christian community where you're pointing each other to Jesus, mm-hmm. y- you are going to have a real hard time. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not only putting yourself in a place where, uh, you could be missing things because right. without the community's perspective, encouragement, support, but you're also depriving the community of yeah. what you could be right. offering Absolutely. them coming alongside them. And, and, um, yeah, and a healthy community of faith isn't afraid of the hard questions, right. isn't afraid of the skeptic throwing their hand grenades over the wall, you know, <laughs> um, because we we believe, or even if I don't get it, I do believe there's an answer to it. Right. And, and, uh, and well, here's some people who've been walking with Jesus a lot longer who've wrestled with that thing. Yeah. And they're still walking with Jesus. Yeah. So why don't I go talk to them? Yeah. Versus... The person who kind of thinks they've done the aha gotcha <laughs> mic drop on Christianity and walked away without looking back at the right. explosion, right? Not realizing that it took like four seconds to put that out, yeah. You yeah. know, and so, um, yeah. And good good judgment is a group work, yeah. Right? Ask yes. ask anyone. Yes. Like I, you know, I've had conversations with people before who they're they're like, well, I don't know where I'm at with. God right now because this this and this happened I'm like bro listen I've had terrible things happen too but like in those times where I've had terrible things happen I need other people who are like hey your judgment of God's economy right now is bad mm. like uh, are you in the word are you have you read Job yeah. have you read anything about yeah. any of the prophets have you read Hebrews have yeah. you read that Jesus says in this world you will have many troubles but take heart I have overcome yeah. the world like the the judgments that we make of God's action are are most times stuck in our 
limited perspective, yeah. what helps us immensely is to draw into a community where you're asking people, am I making the right judgment? Yeah. It's why when our kids, as our kids grow older, the biggest hope I have for my, my kids are going to have to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I hope for my kids, if they, they will at least be like, hey, dad, do you think this is a good decision? Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of me just having to bust in and be like, stop, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, maturity, yeah. maturity is not necessarily always, you know, scoring a hundred on the test. Maturity mm -hmm. is asking somebody else, do you discern that this is something yeah. that God is, is, is drawing us yeah. into is this of god is am i interpreting the scripture right or am i looking at it from, yeah. from a bad perspective yeah good judgment is a, is a group work right yeah the, the the community helps us see clearly it helps us lament together mm -hmm. when when things do come it, it helps us pray and not just try and work it out on right. ourselves but <laughs> right. like just go to god you know there's right. so many things that we, our first reaction might might be healthy it might not be but when we're enmeshed and and surrounded by enmeshed is probably not the correct term because that's like a negative psychological or sociological category. But um, it, it, when we are, you know, committed, uh, yeah. saturated, saturated, yeah. Uh, what there's some other word I was looking for, but whatever. Uh, part of a deep, thick community, yeah. if you will, right? Yeah. That's going to redirect, encourage, support, correct, mm -hmm. rebuke, all the things. Right. Um, even as we will have the opportunity to do that with others. And, yeah. and so, uh, and Jesus reveals himself in the context of community, even. Yeah. Like, he is showing himself to be the fulfillment of the expectations and institutions of a co covenant community. Right. And, and he is revealing himself to others and bringing other sheep into the fold, even those that didn't originally belong to that fold, bringing mm -hmm. them in. Uh, he's not just redeeming us to himself individually, but as a family in God. And so yeah. um, that's a, that's an important part of not just figuring him out or drawing conclusions about him, but following him, loving him, yeah, serving him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, and bad judgment works the same way. Bad, bad judgment <laughs> yes. is usually done in community. Walk with the fool, <laughs> walk with the fools, become a fool. Walk yeah. with the wise, become wise. I mean, that's biblical, yeah. biblically, biblically principled life. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I found it to be just not to stroke your ego or anything. I, I did find oh, come on. You can do that. the That's sermon <laughs> the sermon this weekend though, I just found helpful because um it it was so practical in the stop judging Jesus by your own, mm -hmm. you know, earthly judgment. Mm -hmm. Like step back, look at him from who he says he is in the intricacies. And I think mm -hmm. you never I just, you know, one of the things I've, I've thought in the last couple of days is you never out, you can never outgrow that. Mm, like we yeah. always, as Christians, we always need to step back and ask ourselves the question, am, am I judging rightly? Like, mm -hmm. am I judging God's work rightly? Am I just in this pattern of this is I'm just going through life and yeah. I'm narrow focused. I've got tunnel vision. I'm not allowing the people around me to influence, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how I'm viewing Jesus and, and to see him rightly. I'm not. You know, as embedded, you know, in asking people, hey, am I seeing this the right way? Embedded. That was the word I was looking oh, for. Oh, good. There it is. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it just so essential that we be able to step back and admit, I'm, I'm probably not seeing things rightly mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. and I need help with that. Yeah. Which is really the whole thing that we've been talking about. Absolutely. Is if you, the number one key to really seeing Jesus the way he, who, for who he says he is, right? For how he presents himself to us is humility. Yes, absolutely. Right. There is absolutely. no, there is no true knowledge without true humility. And that we would say the best knowledge is knowing Christ and who he is mm -hmm. and what he's done and then what he expects from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's cool. Good. Well, if you have any questions on anything else that you guys uh, have, have heard today or anything that you want us to talk about, discuss, uh, we'd be happy to take those under consideration. You can email us. You can email Keith K at Stonebridge dot church. Um, but uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, uh, recommend us to other people if if they have questions. We'd love to answer any of those things. Um, and uh, hopefully, if you're so, if you're in Cedar Rapids, we would invite you to to come uh, check out the church. If you don't have a church home and you're listening. Um, you can come to Stonebridge Church on Stony Point Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we meet at 8, 30, and 11. Got it right. Nice work. So it's still hard to get in that. But uh, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.